Welcome back to the Cryptic Condros channel. So today I'm at the NARBC in Arlington 2023, which I came over from the UK to visit. The man next to me is the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Patrick Holmes. Um, if you're into Condros or you're not into Condros, you need to look up Mr. Patrick Holmes because Pat is a legend, a walking Condro encyclopedia, like one of the nicest and most humblest people I've ever met. Um, so first of all, I want to say it's been lovely to meet you, Pat. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for being yeah. so... Uh, welcoming when I've been yeah, over here. Yeah. Um, it's been a pleasure and an honor to meet you. Um, I appreciate that. So let's start from when when did it start? You know, how did how did the 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 chondro addiction start? Well, I will um, I'll, I'll repeat something that I just said just a few minutes ago to somebody um, about how far back it really started. Um, I this girl was just looking at this snake um, and she living with her parents and she said that um you know she that this is the dream and i was like yeah. well you know they're easy to keep and blah, blah blah and she's like yeah my parents won't let me have a snake yeah i was blessed um when i was a kid uh and this may have been uh maybe this is a little bit dysfunctional but we had i grew up in a three-bedroom house yep. and my parents had the master bedroom and myself and my two brothers shared a bedroom and then we had a reptile room yeah, in yeah, the yeah, house yeah, yeah, yeah. and so it's just all i've always been my thing and when I was young, I had a reptile book that my dad got for me mm -hmm. um, that he may or may not have borrowed from the library and never <laughs> taken back. And, yeah. uh, and it had an Amazon basin, emerald, a baby basin F F in there. And, um, and I, I just always thought it was the coolest snake, man. Yeah, this yeah. baby basin that didn't even look real. It looked like, I don't know, I can't it's even crazy. describe it. Yeah. And, yeah. and so that's what got me stuck on arboreals and seeing pictures of emeralds were what I was into first yep. and and seeing pictures of them in that ambush pose is just always the coolest yep, thing to yep, me yep. so I got my first Amazon tree boas because they were cheaper from Tom Crutchfield in 95 wow. and I was just stuck since then um, wow. and so I got my first chondros in 98 um, a pair of arus that I got for I got an adult pair of aru for 150 bucks and wow. uh, that somebody brought into the pet store um, and I've kind of cared for some chondros and had some off and on, but in 2006, mm -hmm. I got my first captive bred chondro, and it was adult sorong male that I also got for $150 yeah. locally. Wow. And I got a wild caught bioc that year. Um, and since then, I've had chondros the, the whole time since 2006. Yeah. And so I started, um, I started uh, breeding them put my first pairs together in late 2009 so i got my first clutch from one of the first two pairs that i put together in yeah. 2010 and was that a strong to be or uh no that was um that was uh uh kofi Ao female wow first two females i paired up were big canaries wow and uh they were not common but way more common back then yep yep um, and, and I was out crossing, which is terrible. I would never breed a female Kofi out of anything other than a Kofi out these days. Yeah, of course. Um, but, uh, um, yeah. And so, uh, Aru male was the sire of the, the one that took, um, yep. he was a little stud and, um, it's, it's just been, it's Spiral been pretty much. That. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I had a few clutches back then and then mm -hmm. of course, had, you know, I was on vacation for about five years. Yep, so, yep. Uh, um, but I had snakes the whole time I was gone that a couple of friends were taking care of, had a couple of chondros yep, yep. and stuff. And um, so over the last six years, mm -hmm. um, I've just been putting it all back together um, and and had some pretty decent success. Um, this year has been pretty good. And uh, yep, yeah. Apart from the, I know you've got crazy designer stuff. Yeah. You now make sure you check out, uh, Pat's page, uh, GTP Patrick or Arboro Obsession. Yeah. Make sure you go hit him up. I'll be linking it in the video, so go check him out on Instagram. Um, but you've got some crazy designer stuff. Yeah. But you're also the Biak King. Yeah. So you know that that like one of these which Pat produced. Um, yeah. What what draws you? Well, first of all, do you prefer locality or designer or? Do you have a preference? It's I, all preference. I love I love all of it, but if I could only keep one or the other, it would be locality stuff. Epic. Um, and um, and believe it or not, Biak is not my favorite locality. I oh, love wow. the 
the Western mainland types, the polka types. Yep. So, uh, no, no. Um, and uh, it's so Sorong and Manakwari yeah. and all yeah. that. Yeah. Those are my favorite, my favorite chondros. And I would love to have more of them. I have, I have quite a few Sorong and a handful of Manakwari, but mm -hmm. I, I would like to have a lot more of that stuff. Um, and the Biox, the reason I have so many of them, in addition to the fact that I love them, is because they're just so readily available. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and they're they're relatively inexpensive yeah. and. And so I have the ability to kind of pick and choose and get the best ones. Yep, I just, yep. I love my collection of Biox. Um, and this is one of the babies that I produced yeah. from that, um, yeah. from one of my, you know, my, one of my pairings this year. Actually, the, all of my Biox clutches have been from one male. Wow. Yeah. And is, that, is that because he's phenotypically a, a way that you prefer? Or is that just because he's a good male? Or? Both of those. So he's, right, he's gorgeous and he's older so and all all of the other males that I have are his sons. Wow. So I don't like, while I have him, I'm just going to keep using him. Use them, yeah. One of his male, one of his sons I tried to breed and he didn't have any interest. And so okay. I'm like, I'm, I'm just going to keep, uh, keep using this male. And then when I feel like he's ready to retire, I'll start using his sons. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, he sired eight clutches for me. Sony, how are you doing brother? It's good to see you, man. Um, and, uh, that was uh, Sony. I don't know if you've seen him. Um, he, he's the one that had the. So when you guys were interviewing Ken. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah. We're, and he just recently did the joint pairing with. Yeah. It. That's the guy oh, that he did wow. that with. So hey. he was old school local Condro guy. Okay. Um, and uh, Sony is also, um, without saying too much, uh, been on like we've had some similar journeys okay. and yeah. uh, and yeah. and both um, come out on the other side of things yeah. and yeah. so. Um, it's uh, it's always always awesome Great to see, see that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so the I love the designer stuff. I love yeah. all the designer lines. Yeah. Even though I have some of the best high yellow stuff out there, high yeah. yellow is actually my least favorite. It's oh, just wow. that, like the cards have kind of fallen yeah. in place where I've ended up with some really awesome high yellow stuff. So, so do you prefer blue or metal? Yeah, I'm all about the blue stuff, blue, man. Blue. Yeah, I'm yeah. all about the blue. I love the calico line stuff. For high yellow, I love red, funky red neo high yellow stuff. So like the tiger stripe yeah, lineage. That's epic. I also dig really nice tricolors. Yes. So like the the king line stuff when yes. they have good blues, yeah. um, and uh, you know so all, all of that are like the really really funky stuff, the high yellow line stuff that are tend, like lean towards orange and have yeah. have some black yeah. and yeah. so I've got I've got some stuff like that going on this year. But yeah, the blue is what does it for me, and um, that's also why I like the sorong and all that. It's all, all those. Um, all that blue stuff. Yep. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, what have you? So you've you've got quite a few clutches this year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are we? You're on clutch six. I want to say six that I've six. hatched, and hopefully right. one more on the way. I'm not really sure what this girl's doing. I she shed last night, and it may have been a prelay, so I need to wow. pull her out and palpate her. So um, you might hit seven this year. Yeah. This Possibly. this one's early enough where they'll hatch this year. Yep. Hopefully have quite a few more clutches laid this year, but they'll all hatch next year. Because, yeah, I've already started putting pairs together. For you guys are really year. putting it on for the Condra community, like Texas especially. Like, yeah. It's, you got, you've had six. Bill's had six. six. Yeah. Then you've got Mark that's had a couple. Mark had two really big clutches, yeah. really yeah. nice clutches too. Then you've got, um, I guess, is you've got Trav, which was in, that was last year, but. Yeah. Trav's done really well. Yeah, um, Ryan Glenn is local right, yeah. up here as well. Um, Alum. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Alum Gloves. Yeah. Um, yeah, Alex uh, had, had his first clutch. Um, we've got, man, there's some guys in Houston big, that are really guys. doing some some yeah. crazy stuff down there. Um, Sean Collins, he doesn't post a whole lot, but he has an insane collection yeah. um, down in Houston. Sean is a good dude. I've, yeah. I've been to his house, and um, he's come up here to see me, and twice actually mm -hmm. um sean collins is awesome mm -hmm. um but yeah um you know guadalupe was just here there's there's a couple there's about three four there's four collections in the houston yeah. area steven saltzman yeah, uh, yeah. There, there's four collections in the houston area that are just out of control oh, with calico crazy, stuff yeah. and all of that all of that and so big 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 topic <laughs> amongst people is you've got yellow in your hands yeah now Yellow or red neos? What you? I'm all about the reds. Yeah. Um, I I get enough yellows as like 
hate saying it this way because I'm not writing them off. I love yep. the yellows, but I get enough yellows as like byproducts of the things mm -hmm. that I'm working on mm -hmm. that I that that's I get my fix from that. Yep. Um, yep. You know, my favorite one of my favorite Conjo looks is just like a classic Sorong with a bold blue bold stripe. Blue. Yep. But whether it's the locality stuff I have or even some of the designer stuff like the mm -hmm. the outcross Prada stuff and whatnot anytime yellows pop up in those pairings yep. they're going to be spectacular yeah, yeah, yeah. awesome bold blues yeah. and so i get plenty of that um without intending to get it yeah. um and some of the biot clutches pop up yellows my male's not dominant red but he has he's thrown all red clutches with red females right. and he, but he's also sired yellow yellows. babies like this okay. um and this is one i brought two to the show just to, i was trading for a rack system and i let them pick between two that two. were yep. yeah that were eating really well and uh she picked up the other one and it was super feisty and bitter a whole bunch of times yeah, and she's yeah. like yeah i'll take I want this one. one yeah yeah, yeah which is the same thing well, i do they right? character, so. yeah and yeah when it comes to the designer stuff as well do you think the reds there's a lot of topic of like the dark like the ones that the, the maroon neonates or the mm -hmm. really dark black neonates have the more they're more likely to become extreme like extreme looking phenotypical like phenotype it animal. totally depends on the lineage yeah. um and 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 what exactly you're looking for yeah. it, yes it does tend to be that way people like to keep dark babies but the um the truth is that it, it's entirely dependent on what what the lineage is and also extremely unpredictable how you doing uh, do i want you to what no it's fine no, no it's fine right here no, it's fine yeah um I'm going to put this guy up. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, so... Um, uh, it holds? It's hard for you? Yeah, no, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it totally depends on what you're looking for. Like with the the Manaquari stuff and the Prada line stuff, a lot yeah. of times I'm looking actually for the redder babies. Um, I've got so the, one... The, so the actual, the, the more vibrant reds, not the maroons? Yeah, both a little, a little okay. bit of both um yeah. and there's just kind of certain tones that kind of stand out to me yeah but i'm also with when when, we're, when i'm looking at locality stuff because i work with northern localities uh, well really with any locality yeah um i go for really busy patterning and funky patterning yeah. that's my thing versus ground color yeah um i'm letting a couple go uh this year already there's some of the darkest ones in the clutch but their patterning is just kind of plain to me and so they're they're ones that i feel like i, that I just so, don't need so would you say that you pick from pattern first almost always pattern first. almost always pattern first and uh so the, you, you go from pattern first and do you look for more busier do you look for more reduced or do you look for as you know what the parents look like do you try it, and again to it totally depends on what the what the lineage is and okay. what traits i'm looking for there's a lot of different things and then with all of that being said and unless they're like pure locality animals yeah. and sometimes even then it's just not predictable yeah it's just not um i was talking about this last night because i was having like i was sending out pictures of some available babies yeah. and i was having like ptsd from animals that i sold that turned out <laughs> really awesome Epic, yeah. and yeah. uh um you know the first crook clutch that hellboy and the void were in yep i sold the plainest one of those for thirteen hundred dollars and it turned out to be a female and the third nicest one in the clutch oh, after nice. the void and hellboy right so wow you know and, and yeah and last night i sold the plainest one from this blue deuce beyond Which, clutch and yeah. my friend and i um were talking about how Maybe we should hold on to that one. And I was like, well, I won't push this one, but I'll, I'll put it out there. Yeah. And if it sells, it sells. Sounds and sure good. enough, somebody jumped on it. Um, and you know, it's, it's the ugly one. So it's probably a female and probably going to be <laughs> awesome. So yeah. it actually just looks like almost like a pure Biak. Yeah, um, yeah. There's nothing, it's actually beautiful. It's fire engine red and a gorgeous snake. It's yeah. just the least interesting looking neonate in the clutch um the thing is you never know what you're going to get guys if you if you, ha if you don't keep chondros you, you buy these as a yellow or red babies yeah. and you don't know what they're going to get even if the lineage is super powerful yeah i've seen people buy snakes from parents that are like godly parents that have just been a, yeah. a green snake solid green yeah. and and it goes the other way too although less often yeah. but it, you can have completely plain looking parents throw insane offspring throw out, yep. and sometimes they're just flukes sometimes it's very consistent yep. um 
Brandon Osborne used to have a pair of snakes called Big Mama and Big Daddy. Mm -hmm. They were solid green, mm -hmm. and um, and one was a red neonate, and the other was a yellow. And they threw some of the craziest high yellow stuff yeah. every time. He brought, I think he did that pairing like three times. Yeah. And the high yellow was so consistent. There's a really well-known picture that used to float around on the forum. Three female sibling holdbacks that were like two or three years old and he had them all, all out together at the same time on three different perches and yeah. you couldn't tell the difference between them then wow. they were all probably you know 80 percent yellow or something with, with white scales with the high them. yellows yeah do you think so this is something i always i've heard differently from people yeah. and it's been a little bit confusing for me mm -hmm. do you think a high yellow is more likely to come if, if you had two a pairing from two snakes that were from high yellow descent yeah do you think if they came out with yellow neonates and red neonates Mm -hmm. Do you think there's there's a more likely chance of, of getting a higher yellow animal from a yellow neon? Yes, okay. yes. Um, and, and it also, that kind of still goes back to exactly what type of high yellow you're looking for. But yes, within the high yellow pairings, um, there, there, do, there does tend to be, the, the yellows tend to be the way to go. I still go for reds because that's what I'm, there's certain yeah, things yeah. I'm looking for. Yeah, um, but as far as just the chances of getting high yellow, yeah, yeah. that's, and the yeah. thing is that high yellow is the easiest trait to reproduce. Um, you can breed a biak, the plainest biak to anything and have a chance for high yellows. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and it's not, they're, they're still beautiful and really, really extreme ones are some of the most amazing chondros. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it still goes back to the lineage and exactly what traits you're looking yeah. for. Um, but the other thing is that it seems like high yellow is just more likely in animals that were yellow babies yeah. um from a genetic standpoint it's not about line breeding it's just like blues and blacks yeah, yeah. In, in the reds yeah. um there's something that's genetically that's attached to those neonate colors that gives them a, a better and yeah. the guys argue about this and they say oh no you had enough line breeding you yeah. could do this or that that's not that's just not the case there are certain types of color changes and certain just certain things that they do that a yellow baby is just not going to do versus a red. Um, it, it, it's just what it is. And no, no amount of line breeding. If, yeah. if that were the case, like we, we see some of these extreme traits pop up in the wild, like yeah. high yeah, blue yeah, yeah. in the wild yeah, 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 yeah. in reds, but yeah. not in yellows. It, it's just a, they have a different type of color change. Yeah. So I've got a personal um, question for me. Sure. So I've got a, I think it's a 1.2 mm -hmm. of a lemon tree Hampton cross Linsky. Yeah. Which I'm planning to either sib to sib mm -hmm. and see what crazy stuff it throws out. Yeah. But I've also got a Golden Boy Rico Rico Bayak yeah. to uh, uh, Vinsky. Yeah. Now she's ready this year and I won't be pairing her. Yeah. But would you, should I use a male? So the two males I'm choosing out of to use for her mm -hmm. would be the Serrat Lagerfer to Vinsky. And then I've got a, and then the other one would be the Lemon Tree uh, Hampton to Vinsky. So my, my um i'm biased yeah but that serac pairing yeah. threw amazing yeah. shit just amazing and so even just from a genetic standpoint i always want to see the animals before i would make a decision yeah. like yeah, that like oh have you send me pictures yeah, and yeah. i'll tell you what i think yeah. but just on paper yeah that's where it's at man okay. because they're there was some just insane black and blue stuff that came that came, came out, out of that. that yeah man. and i've got a pure vinsky female which is yeah being cool at the moment and I want to pair it when I get back. Yeah. Do I, yeah. Do I wait till next year? Because the Surat Lager for Vinsky male won't be ready till next year. Yeah. Do I wait till next year and put him onto her? Do I go this year and go Glass of Wamina? And use the other, use the you know what I mean? So it's, it's such That's tricky. Um, I would have to have you send me the information yeah. and then I can look at the ages of the animals yeah. and, and the lineage. And then you still have to make a personal decision yourself of knowing getting the information and then deciding is it worth just giving the female another year yeah. anyways oh, yeah. um because just because they're ready you know and I, I struggle with that all the time you just want to you know you want to get something paired up and you want to get that yeah. clutch or whatever and teaching yourself to be patient yes. um can can be huge um and you know i i have the same it's the same feeling around pairing females consecutively and stuff like that so there's just yeah. Um, this this coming spring, I'm hoping that my well, actually for my fall pairings and spring pairings, I'm hoping some of my patience is paying off. Some girls that I decided to give more time to yep. and get really big um, that I'm hoping are just gonna throw me some really awesome clutches. I want to um, say like I see 
the stuff that you put up, some of the animals mm -hmm. and the pictures that you put up on your Instagram. Yeah. It, they, they are mind blowing. And, I, and, and Pat was nice enough on the first day here to, to went to his shop, saw you know, a bit of behind the scenes. And he's got yeah. some crazy yeah, animals there just, as well. That's just in the quarantine. Yeah, that it is too. crazy. Yeah. So I want to say, Pat, thank you very much. It has been an honor meeting you. Thank you. Thank you for the time and the I'm couple of days that we to spent together. Tonight yeah, too, we got man. we got a Texas yeah. barbecue this evening. Yeah, that's right. Um, thank you for just spending your time with me, talking yeah, to me, thank you. and just your company and yeah, it's I been really awesome. It. It's been awesome. I really appreciate you guys coming by the shop and uh, and it's again it's going to be fun tonight too, yeah. man. Yeah. I, I love uh, kind of sh sh I'm proud Texan and I yeah. like sharing yeah. the culture and. I, I I still feel terrible because MJ was here one year and I took him to a barbecue place that <laughs> the barbecue place the Lockhart's in Plano is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. But the one out here is like this like offset that yeah. has a limited menu and I had oh, no right. idea okay. until we walked in. Yeah. And it was like really disappointing right. and and to this day and, and it was so really <laughs> terrible because MJ um, is convinced that all the best food in the world is in San Diego yeah, and yeah. I, I disagree completely. But then and that so obviously... I really lost the yeah, heart yeah, yeah. one. But uh yeah we're gonna go to a place that's literally one of the yeah. one of the best barbecue joints in, in Texas and okay. uh um and it's gonna be awesome. Let them know where they can find you Pat um, so I am, I'm Patrick Holmes on Facebook, although I, I don't always, I've got about a thousand people in friend request yeah. purgatory right now, yeah. but I do have a, um, a Facebook page. I'm coming to see, come on around, dude. I'm fixing to come see you right now. All right. Um, and, uh, I do have a, um, Facebook page that I don't stay on top of enough. It's arboreal underscore obsession, arboreal obsession on Facebook. And then I'm on Instagram, um, arboreal obsession and, uh, um, and uh gtpatrick.tx so arboreal underscore obsession and uh gtpatrick.tx on instagram pat that's a wrap thank you my brother thank you um after this we're going to be moving on to more content from america we've got bill Siegel's collection interview with mark hager from texas Condros. we've got alex warren from amazing arboreal's collection and then we've got bill Siegel's pre-party and the interview from focus cube habitats so keep locked in. There is unbelievable content coming out. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe, click the notification button. Yes.